Hello everybody, welcome to a Facebook Live with Jeannie. I am Jeannie Nielsen, the card lady, and I'm very excited to be here with you today. I think that you have probably heard me say before, and I'll say it again, um, I have, I listened to a brain trainer, Dana Wild, and she is so good at helping me get on the right page and figure out where I'm supposed to be attitude-wise, etc. And one of the things that she has always said is, if you aren't in a good place when you're doing something, don't even bother. Don't even do it. Um, so I had a little bit of trouble today. And then finally, I got myself in a good spot. And I have something to share with you today. Now, what I do have to tell you is I wanted to focus on some designer paper because the designer paper is on sale. Um, I couldn't make anything work today. For some reason, I, I can't wait until my next Facebook Live, which by the way, will not be next Monday. It will probably be next Sunday night, I'm thinking. Um, I'm going to be using the Dainty Delight with the Country Inn uh, designer paper. I've got it all planned out, but anyway, couldn't find my Dainty Delight stamp set anywhere today. So we're gonna have to wait until next week. So instead, today we are going to focus on a couple of techniques. Something a little bit different. What I'm going to do today is make a note card box and we're going to do some note cards and we are going to design and we're going to decorate these note cards with the uh, Softly Sketch stamp set. The Softly Sketch stamp set just has a, three different watercolor sketches. I would call them watercolor sketches, um, which I am going to show you a couple of different techniques to do these note cards for. And then we're going to design and decorate our note card box. So without further ado, let's get to it. Um, I don't know where I put the Softly Sketch stamp set, but I've got all the uh, pieces for it. Oh, here it is. Okay, what I'm gonna do is go down, and I'm so excited to show you these techniques. Um, real simple, these cards take minutes to do, and then we're going to make a little note card box for them. So I'm going to flip up, and then I am going to flip my camera down, and we're going to get to work. Without further ado, let's do it. So you're seeing my ceiling and I'm going to move my thing over a tiny bit and let's flip the camera. There we go. Here you see my new host code for the second half of July and here's the stamp set, softly sketched. It has just a couple of little sentiments. They're really small, really tiny, perfect for a note card. And then there's a couple of great little designs here. And it's a real easy thing to do with these note cards. So let's do that right now. Let me show you the note card box. Here's the note card box. I made it in azure blue. And I'm going to do the next one a little bit different because what I designed just what I decided is that I love this bow. Um, it's This one will slide off, but my little top is not very steady. It's not in a really good place. So I would have to untie the bow. So we're gonna do something a little bit different. So this is just the box and let me show you the note cards and they're so easy to do. So this is what we have. I've decorated the envelopes and the cards. Uh, this will be next week's card class probably and you will make six note cards and this little box and like i said it's just a couple of techniques and it's real simple here's my first one isn't that so pretty just ho hope you know and inside it could say anything like uh, how much you'll be missed how amazing you really are you're not alone so those are the three sentiments that could be part of that and this is a real easy thing i will have to tell you that I actually re-inked my Memento ink pad to make it even brighter. So this is one of my techniques you're gonna see in just a second. This is technique number two, and I we have the grapes, and all it says is hello. I'm so glad that you guys are all joining me. Thank you so much. These techniques you can do with anything, and these are great techniques to even do with kids. They're fun and easy. Um, now that summer is over, I have a team member that reminded me that I should be thinking about easy techniques that can be done with kids. And this is another one. Real simple. Wait till you see how simple this one is. Um, so let's get to that. And of course, you can do these cards with any color, with any design that you decide. 
So um, I my note card box here uses the color and contour dies, the contour dies that be belong to part of the color and contour bundle. I don't believe it's a bundle anymore. But anyway, that would be another stamp set that would be great to use if you don't have Softly Sketched. So these are just, and then you can use the sentiments from there too. So just a couple of ideas. Let me set this aside and let's talk about this a little bit. So we have, I actually have this filled to the gill because I had, um, there's a couple of different uh, packages here that were coming loose and I tried to organize. These are the Whisper White note cards and envelopes. We also have very vanilla. So you can take your choice if you wanna do it in vanilla or white. I happen to like white, especially in the summer. It's nice and fresh, so I really like that. So there's 20 in a pack of these note cards and envelopes. And here we have them already scored, ready to go. And what we're going to do is use our bone folder and just burnish that edge. And let's get to the first technique. Um, I think I'm going to do the first technique and then I'm going to set this aside to dry just a little bit before I stamp it because I really don't want it to uh, run my memento or anything. So what I have here are the watercolor pencils. And my team member Shirley reminded us that these watercolor pencils are in the catalog and they really don't get a whole lot of love. So what I'm going to do is I've got a couple, it has many different colors. But we are going to concentrate on, if I can get it out, because the one that I need is in here, the Gorgeous Grape, and then I have the Garden Green Pencil. And I'll show you what we're going to do. I'm not going to use the Garden Green Pencil right off. I'm going to save that for later. But when you're using the watercolor pencils, it's really important that you're using the edge of it, not the tip of it, but the edge. So what I'm going to do, and let's, let me make sure I'm in my... Thing. Yep, I am. I'm just going to go like this, right down the paper. I can go as dark or as light as I want. I can go back over it. Um, when you have the watercolor pencils, you can easily do it with many colors and do like an ombre or rainbow effect. I just wanted to do the purple because to me, that's what the grapes uh, match best with. I have here my biggest, uh, uh, these are called water painters. They used to be called something else, the aqua painters, but now they're called water painters. What, I've go what I'm going to do, and let me get my uh, pad here just so it's not so wet. I'm gonna squeeze out some water into this. Make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, you could do this with a paper towel as well. I'm going to just go back and forth over top of this, and I could do as wet as I want. I'm squeezing a tiny bit, but not too much because I don't want to make texture of the paper. You know, the fibers are going to come out if I do it too much, but I do want you to be able to see it. So there we go. Um, if I use more, you might not see as much of the brush marks as you do now, but here we go. Okay, and I got a little drip of water on that, but we're going to set it aside and it's all good. So wait just a minute for that. the rest of this card. I'm going to just set this aside and let this just breathe a little bit, dry out a little bit, and let's move on to our next uh, technique. So this next technique, I'm gonna take out another of my basic white note cards. I actually have two here. I've got my note card. I'm gonna burnish the edge. And what should we do for our next technique? Well, for the next technique, I have decided what I'm going to do, if I can find it, I have my Balmy Blue ink pad here. And I have a block here. So what I'm going to do, hopefully I've got a cleaner side rather than a, a dirty side. What I'm going to do is take my balmy blue ink pad, open it up here, and I am going to just ink up my block. Now this is the smaller, not the smallest, but the smaller of the long blocks that we have. There's also a big one, but it's too big for my note card, so I had to come up with a different idea there. Um, and then the other thing I need, 
if I can find it with all of my mess going here, I had it here, I need a spritzer. Now I don't need a spritzer, but it works best with a spritzer, I should say. So what I'm going to do is I filled this with water. I could actually even do it with water and alcohol, a little, a little mix of it. If I have the, um, I think it's like 91% alcohol, dries really quick. But I, this is, I'm just gonna do water. And what I'm gonna do is hopefully not get it. Oh, let's aim for the block. I just spritzed it a little bit, just like that. And what I'm going to do is put this in the middle of my card, just like that, and press down. Now, I think I spritzed it a little bit more on some ends than on others. I'm putting quite a bit of weight on here, just like that. And there we go. Now, this is another one that's going to work really well if it dries just a little bit. So let's sit set this aside. Now, can you believe this is balmy blue? It's so intense. It's just like using the reinkers with it. But I have, I with my stamp that I used, it's really, really easy. Okay, on to already technique number three. And this one doesn't have to dry already at all. So I've got my note card here from the Whisper White note cards. So easy, there's a package of 20. So, so easy to do this. And my last technique, I'm actually going to use my Stampin' Pastels, my Soft Pastels assortment. Let me, this is the color I want. I used this one, and what I did was, I just went down the paper. Let me make sure I'm in the camera, just like this. I didn't really wanna do too intense, but that's how I did it. Just like that, I really didn't want it to be, like I said, not quite so intense, but now I'm using my finger to just soften it a little bit. You can use a Q-tip, you can use a sponge, um, you can use a sponge dauber, whatever you wanna do. If you do it with your fingers, your fingers are gonna look like this, just telling you. And the best thing to do is wipe your uh, fingers on something so that it doesn't carry through onto your card. That wasn't supposed to happen. It worked much better the last time I did it. But anyway, so here we have our Memento ink pad. And the first one that we're going to do is this image that has the butterfly and the flowers. And I'll show you what I did. So I inked this up. And because it's a big stamp, I actually like to bring my Memento ink to the stamp instead of the other way around. And when I tell you I added my memento refill to this so it was nice and bright. I'm not kidding. This is a wet pad. Okay, so what we're going to do is just, I should stand up for this. I'm going to just stamp this right here in the middle, up and down, just like that. I'm going to try not to rock it because if I rock it, I'm going, it's like that. It has enough of an edge that it's going to make a little halo. Well, we're going to ignore that because we can. Um, what am I going to say? I think I used the hello with the grapes. Um, we're going to say, just wanted you to know, and make sure that you're stamping it straight up after going through all that trouble. I know that it has little dots at the end, so I'm going to, I've already put it on my block. I'm gonna trust my block, and I'm just going to stamp just like that, and don't rock it because you don't want the little halo. And there you go. Now what I'm going to do yet still, and I think I have a little Q-tip in here, I do. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of color to my butterfly and to my flowers. So for the butterfly, I've got my uh, red pastel here. No, this is for the flowers, I'm sorry. I'm gonna add it to the flowers. I'm just taking my Q-tip, adding, color to the flowers. And this card is going to be done in just a second. Isn't that just the coolest thing? How quick it is? Just keep adding color if you want it to be more darker and more intense, just like that. I almost think I'm taking some of it off, but this is also in the intense part of the yellow. 
just like before. So just keep adding color as you want. And I really want it to be bright, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. And let's just do a tiny bit to the bud. Okay, good enough. And then what I'm going to do is, I think I used one of the blues, probably this bright blue, and I'm gonna just pick up some color. If you go back and forth, it has a little bit of a film over it. So if you really wanna use it, make sure you really remove that film um, here. We'll just add some blue to the butterfly because this is a nice, colorful, bright butter butterfly, right? Isn't that so cool? And this, even your kids can do this. This is so easy. Beautiful, right? Ta-da! So this is just an idea of something to do. that You could make a whole box of these and give it as a gift. Okay, so on to the, the next one. I know you're waiting for the uh, note card box and it's coming. It is coming. Okay, sorry. I'm not very put together here, am I? Okay, let's get on to this card because this is probably dry already. Like I said, I really inked up my memento. And what I'm going to do is do this one. And to me, this one looks like a delphinium. Um, it could be anything. It could be Canterbury Bells, whatever. That's why I chose this blue background. And, you know, I really could have done the azure blue, too. I just didn't know how bright it would be. So what I'm going to do is stand up. I'm going to center this right there. Hope for the best. Definitely hope for the best. I let this kind of sink in a little bit. Ta-da! Not bad, huh? Not bad. Okay, this is another one I wanted to say inside, just wanted you to know. So actually, that card I said was done could use something inside. So let's take this for one second and finish this, because I didn't. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll choose a sentiment later. Okay, let's get to this one. And this one, because the sentiment is a little bit longer, I didn't want it to get off. I could, you know what? I was going to just add some, uh, a strip of balmy blue to the side, but instead I'm going to stamp off at the bottom and hope for the best. Just wanted you to know, there you go. Now what you could do to decorate this up, I could add more blue to this. I could use my blends if I wanted to. Um, I would even add a little brass butterfly probably to this, a couple of little brass butterflies, um, and that would make it so pretty, wouldn't it? So here's card number two. And let's do card number three because I'm, I can't wait to show you how this looks. This is the grapes, the bunch of grapes. And I felt like it had to be on gorgeous grape. Um, of course, we have green grapes and I always usually prefer green grapes to purple grapes, I have to say. But what we're going to do is just stamp this just like that off to the side. Oh, isn't that so pretty? So pretty, so easy. And then I just have the little stamp here that says hello. And I want to make sure it's not backwards. So I'm checking that right now. Yep, not backwards. I put it on my block. I'm going to trust my block, even though I'm not over top of my card and I can't see what I'm doing. Ta-da, a little hello. So now what we're going to do, we're not done yet because we're going to stamp our envelopes too. And then we will stamp or put together our box, which is just going to take a minute, and you're going to love how easy this is. Okay, um, let me grab a piece of my white paper here. This is my scrap paper that I can, because, yeah, well, it's not supposed to have stamping. This must have been one of my trips to New Orleans, it looks like, and I printed out my thing, but I don't want to get it on my nice grid paper. This is the in-color grid paper, by the way, if you can see that. Um, that's also available to us. Um, you can put in-color grid paper, and I think it's an online exclusive. You won't find it in the catalog, but if you, as a customer, and I'm saying this as maybe not a demonstrator, if you want this in-color grid paper so you have some fun grid paper at home, just put in in color grid paper in the online uh, store and it'll pop up for you. Okay, so because we're doing the grapes first, 
I don't like that it has that big patch. So I really, I guess the big patch is there because that's probably the way the card is designed. So let's just do it like that. Ooh. Now that is pretty, pretty intense. Um, you could color this with blends or with your watercolor pencils. I think if you wanted to color it with your watercolor pencils, um, I wouldn't use water on it. But let's just add a little color to that. Isn't that so pretty? And I forgot that that's what I wanted to do a little bit more with this. I wanted to add a little bit more color. And then I've got my garden green uh, pencil. And I'll just add a little bit to... And it showed up a lot better because my stamp was so light before. But now, like I said, it's so intense. But there you go. Perfect, right? Ta-da, and that took a minute or less. So we'll put our little card in here, ready for our box. Let's do our next envelope real quick. Always make sure you decorate your envelopes. For me, I'm lucky if I even have an inside, let alone an envelope. But I'm really, really, really trying hard to do that differently. Um, just a little... Maybe I should have done it with the stem. I don't know, because it almost doesn't look like anything. But that's okay. We're going to add our blue to that, just like that. And if I wanted to, I could take my blender pen and the balmy blue ink and color up my envelope a little bit, but it doesn't really need it. The fact that you're just giving it something is good. Okay, and card number three, nice and easy. Sorry. Big mess, always. This one, I'm gonna make sure that I get the envelope, uh, the butterfly on the envelope. So let's just do that like this. Ta-da, love it, I love it. I'm gonna make a mess, so I'm trying to put away, I haven't um, cleaned my pads yet. I have my chamois right here next to me though. So that's what I should do next real quick before I move on to um, showing you the box. Let me just put this in here. And the box is super, super simple and it's one sheet of cardstock. You'll need a little bit of tear and tape or Stampin' Seal Plus, whatever you choose. Okay, this is that ready to go. Let me get my tear and tape out. Let me put my you know what, I'm just, I'm not gonna wash them. I'm gonna move them to the table right next to me here. And if anybody has an idea where my Dainty Delight stamp set could be, I know it's here in the room, but you know me. Uh, when I'm looking for something, I can't find it. Usually once I put it out into the universe, um, have you seen it? Obviously nobody's seen it, but it's kind of cool how all of a sudden I usually trip over it. Today I'm not tripping over it. Okay, let's go on to our box. This you need your paper trimmer for. So I've already cut an inch off of my Azure Afternoon whole piece of cardstock. So the whole piece of cardstock is eight and a half by 11. I'm going to make it seven and a half by 11 inches. So I've already cut off my uh, one inch and it leaves seven and a half inches, okay? Let me put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. The first thing we are going to do is score it on the long side. So you're going to open your paper trimmer. And I, because I'm right-handed, like to keep my uh, guide on the right for that. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to score it at one inch. What I like to do for this the first time is I like to move it to the one inch on the right side of the track and I'm going to do that. Keep your cutter blade up top. If you don't, you're gonna cut it and you don't wanna go through all this trouble and then cut it. So just try, keep conscious mind of keeping your cutter blade up here. Um, I'm gonna just score that like that at one inch. Then I'm going to score it. I'm gonna flip it over because it, the rest I'm gonna do on the left side of my track. I'm gonna move it to five inches. So this is staying up top. You're just using the light blade to score. The dark blade is for cutting. One inch, five inches, six inches. And the last one 
is 10 inches. So essentially uh, one inch on each side. So here we go. And then what we're going to do is score it on the short side. So this is the short side. I'm gonna score it at one inch. And remember it's seven and a half inches wide here on the short side. I'm gonna score it at one inch. And if you want to do the mat, if you can say six and a half inches, or the other thing I can do is flip it and score it at one inch again. So it's one inch and six and a half inches is the on the short side you're scoring. So one, five, six, and 10 on the long side, one and six and a half inches on the short side. And this is a seven and a half inch by 11 piece of cardstock. I'm gonna move my paper trimmer out of the way and let me get my snips right here and we're going to form our box. Now the box is really simple to do. What I'm going to do is on each long side, I'm going to cut up to the score line. I'm gonna cut up just like that, right to the score line. And then I, the other thing I have to do because it, otherwise it gets really bulky, I always cut off a tiny little um, and you don't have to be exact, and no, none of your little triangles have to look the same, but I like to cut off just a little bit. Actually, I like to cut it off the inside flat because we don't see it. See how I am just kind of mitering this and cutting just to my score line there. I'm going to do it here. And there. One more side, up to the score line, cut a little triangle, up to the score line, up to the score line, little triangle, little triangle. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want a little bit out of there just so there's not so much bulk when you're folding that in. Um, the neater you do it, the better it's going to be later on when you make your box. So do a good job cutting. Cut my little triangle. And I think that is it. So it, you don't have to be very uh, crazy about it. But anyway. Okay, so now what I need is my bone folder. Uh, this is my special bone folder from Judy Tuttle from Leadership last year. We're getting ready to go to Leadership again this year. It's in Las Vegas um, in August. And I know what you're thinking. Who in the world goes to Las Vegas in August? But if it's for something for Stampin' Up, I'm there. So I'm burnishing all these edges, including this one over here all of my sides, all of my score lines. Um, make sure, just like usual, your uh, your bump, your mountain is in the middle. I say always say monkey in the middle, mountain in the middle. Let me put my snips away here for a second. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is flip it over and I am just going to add some tear and tape and I always just kind of put it through my hand like that and I'm going to do it on the back side on all of the little flaps, just like that. And because it's tear and tape, I can tear it. Um, and I don't have to have scissors. Do you remember the red line tape? You, that you can't tear. That one, you had to have scissors nearby all the time, which meant you had to stop what you were doing. I love tear and tape, so easy to use. Um, like I said, you could use Stamp and Seal Plus, not the Stamp and Seal, but the Seal Plus. You could use that as well. Next thing I'm going to do is take off the backing here. So what I'm going to do is essentially have one box. I don't think I burnished that very well. Um, it, I've got a lid. It's just like a pizza box. So what I'm going to do is remove, and the trick for that is, is do use the little spatula, put it right under the middle, and it just lifts right off the tear and tape. So you have to do it under the middle though. I know I'm probably not in camera, but you know what I'm doing, just like that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is fold this up 
just like that. Fold it up. And then this side, I'm going to fold up as well. Just like that. Now you can do anything you want to close this box. Um, I What I'm going to do, just for a second, is my flaps on this side before I start trying to close the box. There we go. So what I am going to do is just like that. And you know what? You might have want to um, do a little uh, corner, little triangle off the sides, off both sides of the outer edges. But this is how it goes. And what we're going to do is just put our note cards in here. And you could put as many in here as you want, but I'm thinking six is perfect. And look at that, you've got a great little box. Now we're just going to decorate it real quick. And the first thing we're going to do instead of the ribbon, I love the ribbon here, but it kind of worked, and it wasn't the easiest to work with. We'll still use the ribbon, but I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. Remember that it was seven and a half inches by 11 inches? That means I had a one inch scrap left over. And you know what I'm going to do? I am going to use that one inch scrap for my belly band, just like that. Let me get my pieces of, hmm, yeah, where are my pieces of, hmm? Um, what I need is a square here. I don't know if that's the one. Someplace in here, I have my, someplace here, I have my color and contour. Oh, found it. It hit the floor. So I've done the smoky slate. Uh, this is not the largest rectangle because the largest rectangle actually has the um, little cutouts in each individual scallop. And it covers a big piece and it actually covers a big card. Um, I need something smaller because obviously this is not a full size card, it's a note card. What I'm going to do, I have here my uh, piece of basic white cardstock. I believe I did two and a half inches by three and three quarter inches. Um, if you wanted it, actually this one was a tiny bit bigger. It was probably um, two and five eighths by three and seven eighths. But what I have done here, because I cut it wrong for the one cut, is two and a half by three and three quarters. So we've got that here and we're going to, uh, you know what, I'm gonna put this on here again. I'm gonna stamp again. And this time, I think what I'm going, I did this one with the colorful uh, butterfly and the stamp. But let's see what we're going to do. Maybe we'll do instead, uh, will this work? I don't know if it'll work because it might be too big. Yeah, I guess I have to go back to the same stamp, the butterfly with the, the blooms, the little blossoms. And then I'm going to use blends to color it in. So just for a fourth technique a little bit, I'm gonna make sure I don't rock it because I'm gonna get a nice halo if I do. So just like this, let's stamp. Hold it there for about three seconds. Um, I had a friend who always said the three seconds, during that time, you're going to say, I love Michelle, I love Michelle, I love Michelle. Well, you'll have to say I love Jeannie because I, I actually miss that friend. I haven't talked to her for quite a while. Okay, so I have here four blends. I have the Azure Afternoon Light. I have little stickers on all of mine, in case you can't see that. Granny Apple Green Dark. Just because I'm gonna put a little bit of stem, even though I don't have a spot for it. This is the Lolly Dark, and this is the Calypso uh, Coral Light. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of coral here and there because I will color in alternate places um, with the blue. So we'll just do it like that, a little bit like that, a little bit like that, nothing crazy. And then I'm going to take my Azure Afternoon Light Marker and just color in some of the other. And it looks a little bit better because I have inked up my stamp um, this one looks a little faded, you can tell, but I do like it like this. 
Isn't this the most colorful butterfly? Um, they're probably out there. I think that we don't get to see the uh, colorful ones as much as I'd like to, but there you go. And then I use the Lolly Light Marker Blend. And I'm just gonna color that in just like that, just to make it a nice yellow flower. Could be any color. You can use whatever blends you have at home to make it work. You can use a different green. You can use a different yellow. You can do pinks, whatever you want. Um, that's all I'm going to do on that. Okay, um, I'm going to attach this to my color uh, slate contour. I like my liquid glue. Um, I could do dimensionals even, but I think what I'm going to do is dimensionals here. And I'll tell you what I want to do. I'm going to add the dimensionals. Let's see if I have some. Yep, I do. I'm going to attach them. I, I want it a little bit loose because I want it to be able to slide off. Don't make it so tight that you can't slide it off, by the way, guys. Um, I've done that before. So we're going to just add a couple of dimensionals right there and notice how I put one right on the seam just to make sure and I might even actually put a second one there just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere um, and then I'm going to put this right on here and remember I said I wanted to use the Azure Afternoon uh, ribbon I think what I'm going to do for that is just tie a simple knot I don't know if there's a right side and a wrong side, but all I'm gonna do is do just a simple knot. If you don't pull it too tight, it ends up being a nice straight knot. Let me get my, I'm gonna do it like this. I'll just taper the ends just like that. And I've got a glue dot here. And I'm going to just add this right here, just like that. So there you go. This is my card class to go for next week. Ready to go. Isn't that so cool? So I have, don't forget, I've got my um, other three note cards here. This one, I decided that there really wasn't room to stamp my sentiment down here. So I took a little strip. I have lots of the half inch strips because usually my... Uh, second layer is four by five and a quarter, which means that I have um, a, a half inch left at the end of all of my sheets, if that makes any sense. Um, but there you go. And I definitely would love to try this with Azure Afternoon. You could try this with any inks you want. The soft pastels work really well, but make sure you use your blocks um, and maybe spritz them. I did one that I didn't spritz and it didn't turn out quite as nice. I'm gonna put this underneath, just like that. And you know what this is? This is a perfect gift. This would be a perfect gift for a teacher. Sorry, all of a sudden I have a tickle. Let me get a drink of water. I know our school for us ended last Friday, <clears throat> um, but, um, this would be a good teacher gift for next year. And it took, you saw how quickly these went and you could put as many cards in here as you want. But anyway, I'm going to flip back and say, thank you for joining me guys. I hope you enjoyed this little technique class and hopefully next week I will be ready to go with something much better for you with paper. But just keep in mind that if you're ever stuck the techniques are always there. Have a great day. Keep stamping. Bye.